is better She hates it when I call her I'm eating chicken broth, two cans for a dollar I got a bag for my fuel So I can try stuck between the two trees. Side, just like that. And then start cranking. And it's ratchet. Cost about twenty twenty-five dollars, but it saves a whole lot of work because otherwise without this ratchet right here this is how it would be it would be by hand you'd have to do it just by hand just like that pull it up so what that ratchet is designed for is to help roll them up and these will move these slides so I can slide it out of my way and then I would just go on to my next one and roll it up go to the next one roll it up on down the line just like that I wanted to share that with you today
Evidently they don't teach these things like they should in truck driving school. That's why it's good to watch videos. Good to watch driving videos if you can. But here we are on our way to Rutherford today. Beautiful, another beautiful day the Lord has made. Alright, so today we are in Pisgah. There it is, Linville Falls. Today I am in Saltville, Virginia. Okay, right here off of I-81. Right in the heart of town right here. I'm gonna show you what they got. Got a little museum. We got this train in the back. For everybody to, to look at. But I can't get any closer than this because there's a gate. Old train right there. Probably run on coal. Steam, I imagine. I don't know. I have no idea, but there it is. All fixed up on display. Matthew Matheson Chemical Corporation. That's what it says. Yeah, it's a coal train, I got it. Keep the coal. Put the coal right there. Right in that chute right there. And this right here, this part in the back, where it says Matheson Chemical Corporation, that's where they kept the coal at. And I guess the guy shoveled it into the motor, shoveled it into there, into the burner, whatever they call it, I don't know. I have no idea what it's called. I've just seen them in cowboy movies. <laughs> I don't know the terminology. There, there's old number five right there. Check out number five. He's, right, he's bringing up the rear right there. All this is just right here in Saltville, Virginia. Just the Saltville is right off of 81 Interstate and not too far from Tazewell. It says North Fork and Western. Number 51, I mean 518173. Look at that, that's made of wood. Got wood on wood siding on it. <laughs> How about that? That is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. 
and then a little caboose. Oh, I just saw something. I don't know if it's a squirrel. I don't know if that was a squirrel or a bird. I just saw him. Might have been a snake. I don't know what it was. There ain't no tell. I don't know. I just caught a glimpse of it. I may have probably a bird. There we go. Pretty awesome stuff right there. And there's downtown area. I'm just hanging out here, taking my 30 minute break. Truck drivers have a 30 minute break every day. So, look back there. If you look back in the distance, there's an old church. Look at that. That's nice. And over to the side, that's a, some kind of house, pack house. I don't know what it is. That's from the 18s, 1800s, 1700s, something like that. That's, Ain't no telling how old that house right there is. That's a, that is old. I bet that's from, that could be from the 1700s. Ain't no telling. But it's over there in the distance, back behind the church. It's nice, huh? Really nice stuff here. I do appreciate y'all tuning in. I do appreciate it. I, you know, you know I do. And there's probably seat belts probably cause just as many deaths as they save lives. So what I want to do is I want to show you a way that you can adjust your seat belt so that it won't be riding on your neck all the time like this. What we're going to do is we're going to take this seat belt right here. I'm going to pull it all, pull it all out. Okay. And I've got all this seat belt like this. So then I'm going to take my seat belt. Okay. I'm going to fold it just like that. Fold the two ends. And then I'm going to take it, I'm going to tie it into a knot. Just simply tie it into a knot. And then I can adjust it, adjust my knot. Okay, so now we got it into a nice noose. Looks like a noose right there, right? Okay, but that's all we're going to do. And then we're going to just let it go. And see, see how simple that was now? It's not riding on my neck anymore. We brought it down. And the thing is, is with the knot that I tied into a noose, looks like a noose, well the tighter it pulls either way, the tighter that noose is gonna get. So it's just as safe just as safe as it was before except it's not it's safer is what I meant to say it's actually safer than it was before because now it's not riding on my neck like that see it's riding down here on my chest where it should be and I can adjust my knot if I want to let's say if I got a sunburn or something's going on maybe a, you may have broken your sternum or you may have a sunburn, you can adjust your knot even more, a little more loose, so that it's not riding so tight against your body. Okay, so a little trick I wanted to share with you. Check out this old Kenworth right here, folks. Look at that. Here, having a 
work these long hours this time of the year. Trying to get that, get these fields planted, dealing with traffic. Morning traffic jam. It's like every major city in the United States, for sure. Let me show you something right here. Look at that. Check that out. We've got a traffic jam. Now right now might be a good time to let's talk about following distances between vehicles. Here we are. Now what is a good following distance? Now I'm not talking about right here in traffic jam. I'm talking about when we're traveling. Alright, so what I do when I'm traveling I'm up to speed my truck is up to speed what I will do is I will first of all let's wait to see on the highway here. I imagine, put in my mind, an imaginary tractor trailer between me and the car in front of me. Okay? So, let's pretend how, what distance would it take between me and the car in front of me to put a tractor trailer in between me and the car in front of me. Well, be about tractor trailer is about 75 feet with the tractor and the trailer let's just say 75 feet of course they come in different lengths but let's say 75 feet that's about what we want 100 feet 75 to 100 feet is actually what we want that would be here's a tractor trailer look at that how convenient see he's got a 26 foot trailer and then his uh, truck about 20 foot okay so that's uh, we want a little bit more than that but you know what between me and that car right there now I can kind of judge by that truck all right I can add on to that truck pretend that's a little bit longer trailer there that'll kind of give me a distance that I want to be between me and the vehicle in front and that's about the distance you want to be when you're traveling yourself about a tractor trailer about a hundred feet behind and if you can't don't know what a hundred feet is just imagine put an imaginary tractor trailer between you and the vehicle in front of you. I hope that helps. I hope that helps a little bit.
South Carolina, between Lancaster, South Carolina, and uh, well, Pageland. Buford be the next town about three miles up. And there's tornado warnings and watches everywhere. But right now we got a tree that fell straight across the road. And I have got myself in a predicament because I can't turn around in this daggum big truck. So all I can do is just sit here and wait on them to clear out that tree. They brought the DOTs down there with the backhoe trying to scrape it off the road I guess. As you can see, there's a policeman on this side. Looks like there's a fire truck on the other side with the red lights. That's what I'm doing. Just sitting here patiently waiting. Waiting on them to scrape the tree off the road, off the Highway 9 right here, ladies and gentlemen. There is the... My dispatcher, she hates it when I call her I'm eating chicken broth, two cans for a dollar I got a bag for my fuel So I can try 